And we'll just gently blend that together. Blend this a little bit. Okay, then I'll clean the old brush. And we just scrub our brush and load it as thinner, as usual. As usual. Shake off the excess. <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. Okay. Now then, with a clean brush here, I just want to blend this. There. I get letters from people also say, it looks like it's so much fun beating that brush. They just went out and got a brush and beat on it. They don't paint. They just they just beat the brush and enjoy it. And if, that's, if that makes you happy, that's fine. And that's what everything's about. If it makes you happy. Now then, that just knocks off the excess paint. It's not as much fun. Hello there, and welcome to another episode of... Ooh, new sort of legality. Um, right, yes, it's one of those ones um, where I talk about some new paintings. Timestamps down below if you want to cut straight to the chase. Otherwise, stick around and I'll be just talking about some news items, talking more informally than I normally do in my book reviews, perhaps. Um, hopefully, um, we kicked off today with a bit of Bob. Um, this is my lovely new Bob Ross mug, which I've got a nice bit of instant coffee in at the moment. Mmm, delicious. Um, yes, this was a gift from my very dear friends, Dan and Sarah. Why did they give me a gift, you may ask? Well, they love me, and I love them. And also, it's my birthday. Well, it was my birthday. Um, last week, I turned to the ripe old age of 43, one step nearer the coffin. Uh, lovely. And um, but we had a lovely time celebrating it. So the whole family um, came down to celebrate mine and my sister Adele's birthday. Um, so we... Uh, we well, just drunk, drank a fair amount, obviously, and um, visited a really nice um, retro arcade place in Exeter called the Boneyard. Um, so really old arcade machines. Um, they had Ms. Ms. Pac-Man, played a bit of that, Bubble Bobble, um, really old uh, bottom uh, down um, Asteroids game. And loads, loads of games, uh, ones I've never heard of, but very, very old ones. Um, and only 20 pence a play, can't go wrong. After that, we went for a meal, and my sister, who is a baker and a cake maker, same thing, um, she baked me this lovely cake. I have no idea why she chose this shape, but perhaps it's because I'm a perverted old man. No, it's not, it's not. But anyway, the first thing I did was cut one of the tits off and tried to serve it to my brother, but he, he, he couldn't handle the whole tit. Anyway, fuck, what am I talking about? Um, yes, another thing we did um, last weekend, was it last weekend? I don't I think it might have been. Um, we did another one of our live streams, me and the girls. Um, that, this, this one was primarily to celebrate Adele's birthday. All manner of shit kicked off. But if you would like to watch that, it's still on there, obviously, and uh, do so at your own risk. All manner of shit went down. During the live stream, my old mate Zolt was uh, drawing in the background, unbeknownst to me, and pr produced this absolute work of art of the three of us enjoying the birthday celebrations. Cheers, Zolt. Haha. <laughs> yeah, that was a very lovely um, thing to do. Thank you. Okay, right, what else? The only other bit of news, really, um, is that I've been, well, I'm currently selling off the very last of our um, old Commodore 64 and Amiga games collections. So the, the Commodore one is quite sizable, so over 130 um, games, all told, um, all in their cases. I have no idea if they, they still work, but... Um, but they're all there and they're currently on eBay. Um, they're doing quite well at the moment. I was quite surprised that they still hold some kind of value. Um, it could also be though, 
um, due to this photograph where um, I thought I'd pose in front of the games to add some more worth to them. Um, and uh, finally, well, I just did it for my own amusement, but I thought, fuck it, I'll put it on the listing itself. And this uh, Canadian chap just uh, messaged me out of the blue and said he was almost tempted to bid on it on the strength of that photograph. So it actually worked. Uh, so there we are. There we are. It's an advanced tip for selling on eBay. Put a little sexy picture of yourself in there somewhere and, and it may add to the traffic. Um, okay. Anyway, let's cut to the chase and get to the meat and two veg of today's video. So I've done, I've got about seven to show you, I think. Anyway, the first ones I'll kick off are just very simple, abstract ones. They might be background thrower paintings or whatever, I don't know. So I bought a pack of six canvases recently. But, uh, they're very cheap ones. I've got my doubts about them. I'm not sure if they're... I don't know if I'll try to sell these for a while, just because I, um, I don't think they're primed correctly. So if you use the wrong kind of primer, the oil paint will just sink into it straight away. And it looks okay now, but a few months down the line, it might start cracking. It's possible. Um, the, the giveaway sign is that as soon as I painted them, they were dry, touch dry within the, by the next day, which is very strange. But anyway, I'll show you what I've done and uh, we'll go from there, shall we? Right, okay, this is the first one. It's just, uh, these are just very simple abstract ones that I've been doing with my palette knife. So you can see some depth to these, quite thickly painted. So this was touch dry the next day, which is an impossibility normally. And another giveaway is if we look at the back, you can see this, this mottling. The, the paint of the oil should not be going through to the canvas layer. So if these buggers do start cracking, I'm going to give them negative feedback. How about that? Because they were, um, obviously they were cheap, but they were uh, marketed as artist quality. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, so there we are. If they start cracking, it might actually look quite nice as an effect, but here we are. There's the first one. I'm calling, I, I'm, I haven't named them anything. Uh, the next one, actually, I have named is going to be Wicker Man because when I started it, it looked like um, the Wicker Man from the, the film The Wicker Man. Um, but then I just kept adding to it. And so it's this kind of abstract pattern. Again, initially started with the palette knife and then I added all those lines with a, a fine paintbrush, which took me bloody ages. And I probably won't be able to sell this for, for much at all. So it was a complete waste of time, but I really enjoyed doing it. This one has a bled through to the back, so it might be okay. Okay, next. This one I don't like. This one went wrong. And it's just a, a kind of abstract colours and texture. If you can get the light right, you might be able to see the texture a bit. Or not. Anyway, it's quite textury. Um, this one has kind of bled through the back as well, so it's probably going to be shagged in a couple of months. Um, there we are. I probably won't be able to sell that one. Uh, the next one is again just a, a randomised pattern. Um, yellow ochre um, over a, a bluey pinky ground. Again, this was touch dry very quickly and there's some on the back there so I don't hold much hope for this little fella. See the other thing is I don't want to waste too much time doing like a nice painting over the top like I normally do if the thing's just going to crack to pieces so I'll stick those in storage and if they don't crack then I might work over the top of them. How about that? There's another one somewhere. Oh it's on the side. Okay this is the last of the these abstract background ones. This one here. It's quite nice. Quite interesting uh, mark making going on with this one. Uh, pink and blue kind of thing with these various uh, textures. All done with a palette knife. Took me absolutely ages actually. I mean, that looks as though it'd be very easy to, um, to churn out, but you know, it took me a long time. Lots of different layers, which all dried very quickly in a dubious way. Anyway, right, that's the last of them. The, the next one, 
is it's abstract in a fashion but it does have some representational qualities to it so here we are this is the first painting i've done which is in the diamond format so it's it's made to be hung here uh at the corner and it's a kind of um it's like an, a futuristic city i suppose you could say i'm gonna i've taken photographs of this one so we can explore it in slightly more detail so this began as an abstract, completely abstract uh, background. Um, but as I was working into it, some forms began to take shape. As, as you know, this is what I, the way I normally work uh, when I'm doing these abstract ones. They look like tall uh, buildings, skyscrapers. And so then I just started layering on detail. So there's about two to three layers of detail over the top of this. And I just kept etching out a bit more structure, um, various light sources. Um, and what have you. Um, yeah, I was relatively pleased with it. Um, I haven't really done anything quite like that before. So yeah, that was quite nice. Unfortunately, like, like the other ones I've shown you, there is some bleeding onto the back of the canvas. So I probably won't be putting this up one up for sale yet until I can be sure that the bugger's not gonna crumble the pieces. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Okay, let's have a little sip. <clears throat> okay, so the last one I've got to show you is one that I've, I've given you a glimpse of before, I think. Um, so I finally finished this skull one. Here we are. So this is a painting that um, I, I've I set out to do as the cover of the new book I'm going to be publishing before Christmas, a collection of uh, science fiction, horror, short stories. So I thought I'd have something rather unpleasant for the cover. And who doesn't like a bloody nice skull on the front of something? So there we are. There's Mr. Skullington. Um, so what I'll do is I've got some close ups of this fella so we can talk over the top. Um, yeah, so. The way I went about, I created this um, as a kind of a, a collage on, on Photoshop. I, I had a photograph of this engine and I chopped it all up and then recombined it into this strange uh, structure. The various cables that are sprouting out of the top and the bottom, I added by hand um, afterwards. So I couldn't find anything that would work in, in that way. The skull itself was a, a reference photograph, a really tiny pixelated one that I found online. Um, uh, so I, I added my own detail largely to that um, and added the spinal uh, um, section beneath it uh, from another photographic source. Stuck it all together and bops your uncle, fannies your fucking aunt. We had a painting. So I'll very quickly go through the stages of the painting, um, we began with this, which is the abstract uh, canvas that I began with, um, which is quite nice colours. Um, the only problem is that it was applied quite thickly, so the, the painting, some of those lines shows through on the painting, but you don't really notice. Um, so I transferred the, the image I'd constructed on Photoshop using some um, carbon paper, so I wanted it exactly as I'd um, got it on the computer. Uh, then I added those cables by hand, as I said. Um, yeah, it's easier to do it that way. As you can see below, I also had a more of a drawing of a rib cage there, but I decided to jettison that a bit later on. Okay, so here is the first underpainting. Um, because the first, the background is so vibrant and bright, um, I had to lay down some of these darker tones first um, so that the lighter ones would show over the top of them. Um, as Bob Ross would say, there can be no like light without a bit of darkness beneath, something like that. Um, so there we are, there on top of that, that's where I applied the lighter painting. So I'll switch between those two, there we are. Um, yeah, I was quite pleased with this. Took me bloody ages and was a bit tricky. I, I wanted a, a slightly brown palette for this machinery. Um, definitely influenced by, the, by a bit of H.R. Geiger there. Um, 
because a lot of his have this kind of undertone of brown, uh, brown and dark colours. Um, so there we are. Then the next stage was underpainting the skull. This is very, very quick. Did it in under an hour, uh, just blocked in the main areas um, as well as the spine. As you can see between these two, I've now jettisoned the rib cage because I, I just wanted it trailing off into nothing there the end of the um, spine. The final stage was this one. Here's all the detail added over the top of the skull and the spinal column. And as you can see, some of the cables I've added a bit of um, texture to as well. The skull was very quite easy, actually quite easy to paint. Um, I did one back along, didn't I, that skull. So I'm, a, I'm quite Good, not good, but I'm more used to painting skulls at the moment, I suppose you could say. Um, so I quite enjoyed adding all of that extra detail, all of the cracks and whatnot. What I'm going to do now is show you, I've, I've done a mock-up of um, a front, uh, a cover that I'll use for the book. I don't, it might be this or it might be slightly different. Um, but anyway, so this becomes this. This is the book cover. So as can as you might be able to see, I've added a bit more detail in Photoshop. I don't have a stylus and all of that. It's all been done with the mouse, which is a little bit tricky. But I've added kind of pink highlights to the machine parts. All of the all of the reflections I've kind of gone over with a bit of that pink to pick up that pink in the background. Um, and I've also made those glowing eyes in those sockets. Um, I may do that to the painting itself, but it, it was easier to do in Photoshop. So there, that's what I did. You can see the barest outline of a, some kind of a lens, uh, robotic eye in the recesses of that skull. Um, and, but my very big weakness, um, my failing, should, should, shall we say, is typography. I don't know what I'm doing with it. So that's the name of the book, Dark Matter, Tales from the Darker Side of Science Fiction. Um, and my name is at the top there. Um, I don't mind this font. I don't know if it's um, appropriate. I don't know if it works. Um, who knows? Let me know what you think. Um, I'll probably have a tinker with it or if not, give it to someone that does know what they're doing. Um, but for now, I'm relatively happy as this, um, this can stand in for the moment and, and allow me to focus on finishing this bastard book. So I've done, how many have I done now? I've written five finished uh, stories. I've got two other ones in the mix and I'm gonna do another one on top of that. So hopefully the book will contain eight short stories. So there we are, I've got something to aim for. Right, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for watching all this way, if you have or um, if you have done. Um, next week, I'll be back with another book review. I know I said I wouldn't read another Stephen King book for a while, but I just couldn't help myself. So I'm, I've almost finished reading The Regulators, which is the companion novel or the mirror novel to Desperation, which I reviewed last time. Um, so yeah, there we are. Something to look forward to, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to say goodbye now. So cheerio! Mm -hmm.